Good morning from Ogden, Utah. I used to live here, actually, so it's kind of fun to be back. Cassie lived here for several years, and I moved here to date her, and this is where we got married. It's a pretty place. It's fun to be back. I'm here to show you a few really interesting things that I found while living here and also to look for one thing that I, I tried to find before but never could but I've um, gotten a little bit more information about it so I'm going to try again to locate it today. But first off, I'm hiking up this trail here. I'm going to cut this way to go along the mountains here. It's a beautiful morning. It's going to be a good day. I hatched a plan yesterday that involves me driving about five hours straight later today. I'm still trying to decide if that's the thing I want to do, but uh, I thought it would be best to give myself the option of doing it later by getting started really early this morning. So that's why we're out here at the crack of dawn. Okay, I'm at the first place I wanted to show you, but first I wanted to give you a better look at Ogden, at the city here. And this is it. I used to live actually on this street. I used to walk up the street here, up to the mountains, up to the trails that run along this way. Great place to live, great access to the outdoors. The Great Salt Lake is out here. You can kind of see it, that blue on the horizon. This is Antelope Island, which is the largest island in the Great Salt Lake. And then there are on the east side of the city, these big cliffs, there's good rock climbing on these cliffs. There's good bouldering on these big boulders that have fallen off of the cliffs. And on those boulders are some really interesting things. Things like this. These are called the Ogden Mystery Glyphs, and they're petroglyphs, obviously. They've been carved into the rock. But they're not Native American, they're later than that. Apparently they date from about the 1880s, that's the information that I read online, although there is some lively discussion about when exactly they were made. But there's a whole class of petroglyphs called the Western Message, that's what these belong to. They're just these inscrutable petroglyphs, these, these hieroglyphics, basically, that uh, no one really knows what they mean or who made them, but there are lots of them around the Western US. I'll put a link in the, in the video description to a scientific, I think it's like an archaeological journal uh, paper on the subject. But anyway, let's go take a closer look at these. Here are the glyphs, the mystery glyphs. Here's my hand for scale. So it's maybe two feet across, this panel here. Most of these are, are the old glyphs, and then these, I think, are newer. And then it looks like something was... was uh, kind of erased right there. But what do you think that means? What do you think these glyphs represent? If you want to, you can pause the video here and take a look at them, study them for a little bit. Pretty interesting stuff though. Now these glyphs here, the Ogden mystery glyphs, are decently well known. I'd say most people don't know about them, but you can search for them on Google and find information about them. But further this way, in the same boulder field, further to the south, there's some things that most people don't know about. In fact, very, very few people know about. There are two spots I want to show you over there. One of them I know of. The other one I've never been to. I've never found it. I've looked for it, but I've never found it. So hopefully we can discover that together today. All right, I've arrived. So this is the spot that I knew about. As you can see here, there's a pictograph on this boulder. I'm gonna be very cagey about where this is. This is near a pretty high use area and it, it already has some damage on it. I'll show you a closer look at it in a minute here, but I'm just trying to protect this area as best I can. A lot of people come through here, come through this area, and uh, there are, you know, a million and a half people within an hour of here. So I'm just trying to be careful with the information that I share here. Uh, usually I, I share GPS coordinates in the video description. I'm not going to be doing that for this. Um, and sometimes I'll share locations on Adventure Know-How, my membership website that I don't share 
in the video description. I'm not even going to do that. And I know that the, the motivated people out there will be able to, to find the spot if they really put in the, the legwork to do it. But anyway, we have a beautiful little about 8 inch pictograph here. This is just the, the one figure. Here's my hand for scale. It's about 8 inches high and 6 or 7 inches across. There's a human figure with some sort of stick or tree or something off to the side and I thought it was interesting. It, it almost looks like there's a, a border on it. You can see the these little pock marks. I believe that's where people threw rocks at this figure. I don't know how old those pock marks are. Could be 100 years old, could be 5 years old. But overall, beautiful pictograph. Took me a long time to find this the first time around. Now the tricky part begins. So this is the spot that I've been to before, like I said, but there's one more that I haven't been to that I've looked for a couple of times before. I've spent maybe an hour, hour and a half total looking for it. So not days or anything like that, but I have looked for it and failed, but I have a little bit more information this time, I think. So I might be able to find it this time. Well, everyone, I found it. It's on the underside of the boulder, right here. The annoying thing is, I swear I've looked here before. I know I have, but I just didn't look, I guess, far enough down, deep enough down into this little cave area here. It's kind of an awkward spot to get to. Definitely would have been an awkward spot to, to paint onto the rock. And here we have it, so there's this figure here, this figure here, these two human or humanoid figures. Then there's kind of a some geometric shape or something right here, and then right here another little blob of of pigment. It's taken me a long time to find this. Actually, it didn't today. It took me about five minutes today to find it. But overall, I guess it's it's taken more time. At least it feels like it's taken a long time. That is just amazing. It's on the underside of this very steep boulder. I mean, you'd never just stumble across this. And again, for scale, these are a bit smaller than my hand. And now there's one more thing in this general area that I wanted to show you. And that is this rock shelter here. So this shelter used to be occupied by Native Americans. There have been archaeological digs done here. A bunch of arrowheads and pottery and everything were found. It's a good sized shelter. I'll go stand in it so you can see. You could definitely sleep several people in here. I think the the paper that I read said that this was used as kind of a hunting camp to hunt the surrounding area for, for big and small game. A bunch of animal bones were found in here. Awesome. All right, we're doing well on time, so let's keep going. Okay, time for another hike. This trail is called the Waterfall Canyon Trail, still here in Ogden. And uh, I've done this hike once before several years ago. It was in summer. I've never been here in winter, but uh, this trail leads to a really pretty impressive and, and big waterfall, and so it should be interesting. I've never filmed it before. Unfortunately, I'm having some pretty serious camera issues. I'm probably going to end up buying a new camera here today. I'm not even 100% positive that it's recording right now, and that's just unacceptable when my job is making videos, you know. This is where the trail gets steep and it's very icy as it climbs up through the canyon here. Very slippery. Luckily, I have a secret weapon. I put some yak tracks on my shoes here. These were, uh, were in my backpack. I figured the trail might be icy and so I brought them and I Boy, I'm glad I did. There are several different kinds of yak tracks. These are the ones that have this strap to go over the top, but yeah, let's see if, uh, if it makes this hike doable. Because without them, I don't think it is. I think it's just too, too icy. 
Yeah, so far so good. These are helping a lot. Well, made it to the waterfall. Here's the view from the waterfall. It's almost entirely frozen. And there are some ice climbers making their way up this thing. This is somewhere around 300 feet tall. It's a pretty big waterfall for Utah. It took about 45 minutes to get up here. 1.3 miles with about 900 feet of elevation gain. Pretty steep for the second half of the hike. Glad I came here though, this is awesome. I used to ice climb. I don't anymore. If I can find pictures, I'll throw some of them in here. But it's been 10 years since I've done any ice climbing. I always thought it was pretty terrifying. Much more so than rock climbing. Yeah, definitely don't do this hike in winter unless you have some kind of traction devices on your on your shoes. Crampons or cleats or something. It's definitely definitely needed. It would be a pretty brutal hike up and it would be a pretty suicidal <laughs> way down. You'd just have to slide the whole way down. Heading back to the car now, but I'm glad I came up here. This was awesome. I wouldn't mind coming back here again in winter. It's just a steep hike. Oh. Like I said, steep hike. All right, I drove about half an hour south to the town of Farmington, city of Farmington, doing a little hike here. There are two things along this trail that I want to see. I see the first one just ahead of me here, a short distance from the parking lot. But I did it. I bought a new camera. Uh, my other camera just isn't being reliable uh, on this trip and I, you know, I need a camera to do my job. So I bought this guy. No idea how it sounds, no idea how the footage looks. I haven't really changed any settings or done much research about how to use this camera, how to best use this camera. So not sure how this second part of the video is gonna turn out here, but uh, I hope it's okay. And this is the first thing I wanted to see. This is the Farmington Bigfoot. I mean, that's a big, that's a big statue. It's just like in someone's backyard here. The sign here says, believe in yourself, even if nobody else does, Bigfoot. <laughs> what a neat thing. A neat statue. I want a Bigfoot in my backyard now. All right, so 25 minutes into the hike and I've arrived at my destination. It's this pile of rocks right here. Let me read this plaque to you. This hallowed ground is the burial site of the daughter and grandchild of Little Soldier, a Goshute slash Shoshone chief. Originally dedicated in 1861, the site was restored and rededicated in 1989. Now I don't know what the backstory is behind this. I don't know how she died. I don't know why she's buried here. But yeah, this pile of rocks. This is, she's buried somewhere here. The pile of rocks mark the grave. All right, it is 12.40. I'm heading back to the car now. I made a note to myself today that I needed to leave this area around two o'clock. So I'm, I'll be, um, I'll be ahead of schedule here to make it to my campsite five hours away, hopefully, before it gets too dark. So I'm gonna stop filming until then. I'll meet back up with you once I get to a campsite and hopefully I'll have eaten something by then. I'm starving, I haven't really eaten a whole lot today. I haven't eaten since breakfast when I just had some yogurt and granola. So I'm gonna stop along the way to get some food 
And yeah, I'll see you guys at camp five hours away. Well, it's several hours later, and here is my campsite, tucked in back here behind some trees off of a dirt road. I'm near St. George, Utah, a little bit north of St. George, basically in the southwest corner of Utah. I've camped in this general area before, but never on this particular road, so first time campsite for me, which is always fun. I got some pizza. In, uh, in town a while ago for lunch, uh, back before I got on the road. And so I'm not super hungry, but I'm a little bit hungry. I'm gonna save the other half of the pizza for tomorrow. So I'm gonna cook a quick dinner here. Okay, so for dinner here, I'm just gonna make basically a wrap, with some bacon in it. I like, for my trips, I like having pre-cooked bacon. And you can just eat it out of the bag, but I like to have it a little bit warm, a little bit hot. I'm gonna put, let's see, one, two, three, I'll put four pieces of bacon into this. And I'm just gonna heat them up. I'm gonna cut them in half here, rip them in half. And then put these pieces in the, uh, in the wrap once they've heated up a little bit. I probably should have put the dressing on the spinach. Oh well. Bacon is nice and warm. Let's load it onto the wrap. Wrap, burrito, I don't know what to call this. The real trick will be seeing if I can close this and eat it without Everything spilling. Good enough. It's a little bit dry on the spinach. Again, I should have put the dressing on top of the spinach, but I'll survive. Bon appetit. Well, that was a surprisingly decent dinner. That wasn't bad at all. I wouldn't mind having that again sometime in the future. Although I do prefer the Costco pre-cooked bacon. That's better than this uh, Oscar Mayer stuff that I got at Walmart, but. Oh, what a day, what a long day. I have maybe 20 minutes of daylight left. I'm gonna finish cleaning up over here and then uh, gonna, I think I'll, I'll get inside and film some more with this. So stay tuned here. Let's see how good this camera looks in the dark. All right, so what do you think? How's the low light performance in here? Does it look decent? Does it look grainy? I guess I'll find out when I'm editing the video. It was a good day. Apart from the fact that my camera died and I had to spend a big chunk of money on a new one. You know, I like gear, but I don't care about cameras. Cameras are one category of gear that I just don't get excited about. To me, a camera is just a tool, you know? It's not, it's not fun, it's just a, just a thing for me to, to accomplish what I want to accomplish. And I think that, you know, a lot of... YouTubers, they're really into the craft of making videos. They're really into filmmaking. And I've never been that person. I, I never had any desire to make YouTube videos. It just kind of happened almost accidentally. YouTube just happened to be the best way for me to share my adventures, the best medium for sharing my adventures, because I go to beautiful places, I do fun things, and it's it's easier to convey that with with a video than it is with you know, a podcast or a, an Instagram post or something. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's adventures. I did have fun camera shenanigans aside. Had a great time. Saw some really interesting things today. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was. 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.